it's me Allie. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all having an awesome day. I'm here today with another BuzzFeed Tasty Recipes tested video. It has been so long since I have filmed one of these videos. I think the last one was in October of 2016, so it has been a very, very long time. I had so much fun filming this video, but I would like to throw a little bit of a disclaimer before we get started. These BuzzFeed videos are my most requested videos here on my channel, besides my Disney videos. They are my most watched videos, and they are unfortunately my most hated on videos. The amount of hate that I get in the comment sections of these videos is obnoxious, and that is partly the reason why I have not filmed one in so, so long. So here is my disclaimer. If you do not like these types of videos, if you think that I am cringy while I eat on camera, if you think that I am fat, if you think that I am ugly, if you think that you can connect the dots with the pimples on my face, if you think that I am trying way too hard to be like David Seymour, just don't watch this video. There is no need to write such hateful things in the comment section. Please understand that there is somebody on the other side of the computer that is reading all of those comments, and I know me saying that is just going to trigger people to write even nastier comments in this video, but I am just throwing this out there that I am going to be deleting all the negative comments. You might think that that makes me fake because I'm like hiding all the negativity, but there's no reason why I should have to read that each and every day. So that is my morning. If you want to write a super, super nasty comment, feel free, but it is going to get deleted from this series. So that is my disclaimer. I really hope you guys do enjoy this video. Please let me know what you thought in the comments below and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet and you enjoy my videos. I really do appreciate all of the loving comments that I do get and all the support that I get from all of my subscribers. It means the absolute world to me. I love you guys so much and now let's move on into this video. First up, the ever popular pizza bombs. I was the most excited for this recipe. You are going to need some Pillsbury Grand's biscuit dough. You just want to separate all of the biscuits and then you're going to need some mozzarella cubes, some pepperoni slices, and some pizza sauce. Take one of the biscuits and cut it in half, then just use your fingers to flatten it out and press it down onto a flat surface. To assemble the pizza bombs, take some pizza sauce, place it on top of the biscuit dough, take two slices of pepperoni, add that into the mix, and one cube of mozzarella, and then just enclose it all together by pinching all the sides to the bottom. In a separate bowl, melt down two tablespoons of butter, a dash of salt, a dash of pepper, and one to two tablespoons of minced garlic, and just mix it all together. Place all of your assembled pizza bombs into a greased down circular pan, and then just drizzle your garlic and butter mixture all over the top for some extra flavor. Bake these in the oven at 375 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes and boom, check these bad boys out. Three, two, one, eat. So good, oh my gosh. I'm not gonna pretend like I didn't already eat three of these prior to filming because they are just, I don't know, they looked so good and I was like, I just have to try it out. But I'm here to tell you I would give these a easy 10 out of 10. These are everything. It is everything that you think it would be times 10. Huge, huge thumbs up. For these homemade Oreos, you're going to need to melt down one stick of butter, add to that a half of a cup of sugar, and then you just want to cream the butter and the sugar together by mixing it up with a fork. If you have a hand blender, you can of course use that as well. Next, crack open an egg and add that to your cream and your butter. Thank you. 
Now it is time for the dry ingredients. You want to add in one cup of flour. I'm using wheat flour here, that's why it looks a little bit darker. And you also want to add in a half of a cup of dark cocoa powder. Mix your wet ingredients into your dry ingredients until everything is well incorporated. I found that it was much easier to just use my hands for this rather than using a spatula. Just do whatever works best for you. Once you're satisfied with your cookie dough, you want to place it on a piece of saran wrap, wrap it up, and place it in the refrigerator for at least two hours. After the dough has been chilling in the refrigerator for two hours, take small handfuls of the dough, place it between two pieces of wax paper and roll it out. Use a circular object such as a cookie cutter or a champagne glass or whatever you have on hand to cut out circles into the dough that represent the size of Oreos. Place your Oreos on a greased down pan and then place them in the oven at 325 degrees for about 15 minutes. While the cookies are baking in the oven, you can start on the cream filling, which is basically just a fourth of a cup of softened butter, one cup of powdered sugar, and a half of a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And the final step for making these homemade Oreos is the assembly, which is pretty self-explanatory. Sandwich some of your vanilla cream between two of your chocolate cookies and you are good to go. Check it out. I made an Oreo, a homemade Oreo. These were really, really fun to make and I'm hoping they're as much fun to eat as they were to create. So let's try it out. So good. They don't taste exactly like Oreos, but they are a really, really close second. These are actually phenomenal. That cookie is so, so good and the cream filling, oh my goodness, it is fabulous. I give these a 10 out of 10 as well. For the peanut butter and jelly donut holes, you're going to need some more biscuit dough, only this time you're not going to be cutting the dough in half, you're going to be cutting it in quarters. Take the biscuit dough quarters and roll them between the palm of your hands until you get nice spherical pieces. In a piping bag with a small circular tip, you want to add in some grape jelly. You can of course use strawberry jelly as well if that is more your jam. See what I did there? Place the donut holes carefully into a fryer or into a makeshift fryer later. If you do not have one like myself, I just took a pan and I filled it up about three fourths of the way with some vegetable oil and I allowed the donut holes to fry up for about a minute to two minutes on each side. When the donut holes become golden brown, take them out of the pan and place them on a plate lined with some paper towel to soak up any of that excess oil. Now it is time to fill the donut holes. What you want to do is just take your piping bag filled with jelly and stick the tip into all the donut holes and just press down very, very gently. The final step is to make the peanut butter dipping sauce. I did two tablespoons of butter and equal parts of peanut butter and powdered sugar. I did one third of a cup of each and then I just placed it into the microwave for about 20 to 30 seconds to melt it down and make it nice and smooth.
Dip the top of each donut hole into the peanut butter glaze and that's pretty much all there is to it. So there's pretty much no way that these could possibly be bad, but we're gonna try it out just to make sure. So good. So many successes today. Oh my God. These are fantastic. Probably going to be a new staple at my house for sure. And last up, the edible cookie dough. For the base, you want to add into a bowl one stick of melted butter, two tablespoons of milk, I went a little overboard on this one, and one cup of brown sugar. I added mine in gradually. Then you just want to mix all the ingredients together. To that you want to add in one teaspoon of vanilla extract and a dash of salt and again mix all the ingredients together. Next you want to add in two cups of flour that you have baked in the oven at 350 degrees for about five minutes. I baked mine for about 10 minutes just to be on the safe side and then, you guessed it, mix it all together. This is what is going to be your base for your cookie dough. From here, you just want to add in whatever toppings you like. There are so many different variations of these online. I tried to do a mix between the BuzzFeed chocolate chip edible cookie dough and the BuzzFeed chocolate peanut butter edible cookie dough. So I added in some mini M&Ms, some chocolate chips, and some Reese's cups. Before serving, I place this batter or this quote unquote edible cookie dough into the refrigerator for about 10 minutes to chill and then I just use an ice cream scooper to scoop some of it out. This one does not even look good, not even at all and I want so badly to like this because it is all the things that I love just smushed into one but I have a feeling it is going to be so overly sweet that it is not even bearable anymore so let's test it out and see if I'm correct. I was right. Doesn't taste good, doesn't look good, it is ridiculously sweet and I never ever want to eat this ever again. <laughs> And that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know what you thought in the comments below and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet and you enjoyed my videos. I love you guys to the moon and back and I will talk to you soon. Bye guys.